Māori Party looks as though it'll sign an historic deal with National and have a role in John Key's government. Part of National's reasoning is that it wants some insurance as tensions emerge between its other two allies, ACT and United Future. Political editor Duncan Garner joins us live with all the details. Duncan. Good evening, Mike. Well, the Māori Party can choose to be involved in this national government or not because National can go ahead and govern without the Māori Party, but it does seem today that the Māori Party want to be involved. National MP Georgina Tiheho led the karanga as the Māori Party was welcomed onto National's makeshift marae. John Key doesn't need the Māori Party's support to form a government, but he wants it, and he's offering them ministerial jobs and policy concessions to get it. Those options are potentially on the table, as we expressed yesterday. We're, there's a consistency of view that we're taking across all three parties that we're talking to. Behind the scenes, the two parties look close and are getting closer. Key is talking about a mana-enhancing relationship. So the Māori Party is set to support National. That will give Key 70 seats and a good majority. We're going back happily to talk to our caucus and, of course, to our people as we promised we would. Key wants to get the Māori Party, Act and United Futures signatures all on paper by the end of the week. As Tarina has said, that it may be possible to reach a decision by Sunday, depending on what happens. It's just let's take one step at a time. Key also met Act leader Rodney Hyde for 10 minutes today and United Futures Peter Dunn for half an hour. But Hyde with five seats is showing signs he could be difficult. He's bagging Dunn, a sole MP, saying he's only in it for the baubles and has no policy. Well, I think that Peter Dunn's keen to be Minister. Um, we're keen on good policy for the good of New Zealand. Oh, look, Rodney's Rodney. Um, he'll have his own agenda. Uh, I'm just simply focused on what we've been able to achieve and uh, the things that are important to us. Does anyone bring you coffee or biscuits or anything? Key's trying to play down the mini man scrap with humour. I'm just going to keep my happy smiley self. I'm sure I'll be the glue between, between all of them. <laughs> Hyde is also suggesting Key needs to get tough on government spending. Again, Key is laughing that off. L look, um, that might be a political branding issue. So Key is just a few days away now from confirming his government. It will be strong at 70 seats. But it's still unclear what policy concessions he's had to make. So, Mike, uh, John Key really is working at breakneck speed. Just take you through some of the timetable. Uh, on Sunday, it's expected that Key will announce his cabinet lineup and the formation and shape of that government with some of those policy concessions. Go to the Governor General with those numbers on Monday and then have the official swearing in of the national led government and all its ministers, uh, say, Wednesday next week. And then John Key will lead for their APEC meeting on Thursday of next week. Duncan, can tell us more about John Key's reasons for wanting the Māori Party on board. Well, it's a bit of an insurance policy, really, in case uh, the ACT Party throw their toys out of the cot over the next uh, uh, few years, basically. I mean, you'll have the ACT Party to the right and, of course, the Māori Party to the centre-left. So it gives Key uh, just a number of options and also nullifies ACT's influence a bit as well. And perhaps you've seen that today in some of Hyde's um, frustrations. But also there's another reason, of course, and uh, John Key wants to win the 2011 uh, election as well. And he started that process today by bringing the Māori Party in. We all know that National uh, has failed to have... Uh, coalition partners before and clearly John Key is working on a long term strategic alliance uh, with the Māori Party hoping that he can go to the country in three years with the Māori Party in the bag. Mike. Duncan, thank you.